Welcome back to Plakeside Studios, everyone. Ryan here. Today, I wanted to cover a couple topics that have been floating around my head for a few months now. Hopefully, give a couple um, definitive answers to some questions that have been consistent but have slowly evolved. Um, we'll be talking about product segmentation, some wish list stuff for upcoming products, at least ones that I hope are upcoming, and um, in general, how this all relates back to why I've not gone out and bought an Axe FX3. Um, so even with some videos I've done like early, early in the channel, I keep getting questions on those videos that are asking, I've got this particular piece of gear. Should I sell it and upgrade to this? Um, I've got an Axe FX Ultra. Should I get a, an AX8? I got an Axe FX2. Should I get an Axe FX3? I got an AX8. Should I get an Axe FX3? Um, so I, I kind of wanted to talk about how that relates to my situation, why you probably will never see me with a mainstream Axe FX in general and now is a pretty good time to be talking about this because the computer industry is seeing a lot of new hardware launches both in cpu and the graphics card markets with brand new apis brand new architectures and unlike a lot of trickle down economics which very rarely works outside of on paper trickle down absolutely happens with technology we'll start with this big expensive new product and it may be completely unobtainable and completely out of the reach of most consumers because it's not really meant for them at the time it launches, but then give it two or three years and you'll see that exact same technology generally scaled down or more efficient in a consumer product that's able to do a lot of the same stuff that people were paying five times as much, you know, two or three years back for the same performance. Since we're talking about digital guitar rig modeling, it shouldn't be too surprising that we've already seen this exact phenomenon happen within the Axe FX family. So you've got the AX8 that kind of sits between the Ultra and the Axe FX2 that released after the Axe FX2. Um, it's basically pared down Axe FX2 hardware that's fit into a floorboard pedal. You get the same quality of sounds, you get a lot of the same features, it pairs back on some of the power so you lose some of the blocks as well as um, some input output features that make it more suited towards just a live floorboard application more so than a studio rig. But at the end of the day, you're getting a quality product that can do 90% of what the old one could do for half the cost. And that's precisely why I'm not buying an Axe FX3. The Axe 3 is like the quadro graphics card of the amp modeling world. NVIDIA have several tiers of their graphics cards, ranging from barely powerful enough to get a video output signal on your computer, just because that's all you're going to use it for, or ranging all the way up to professional workstations to where you're rendering like tens of thousands of ray traces in every frame, say for like a Pixar movie um, and everything in between with most of it, you know, ranging in the mid to high end graphics card for playing video games. And that's kind of where I would sit in the amp modeling world, the quadro level, the Axe FX3 level, it's not meant for me, you know, it's not meant for us Joe Blows who are mainly playing at home um, that take out to either gig or jam with buddies every now and then. The Axe FX3 is so powerful that you can literally run two guitarists simultaneously through one unit without the need of any other outboard gear to make it work. And oh, by the way, you're saving one rack space compared to having other, you know, two other Axe FXs because it's only a three compared to two twos. What what use do I have for that? Um, that's well beyond the scope of, of what I need. The increased power is great, and I could definitely use a little bit more power every now and then, but we're talking 5% of the time that I hit the ceiling of the AX8. Um, if I had an Axe FX2, I probably never would. Some things I would like to have are you know, a little bit more processing power for more reverbs and um, dual amp blocks would be super cool to blend between amps or have just two more channels. Obviously, the instantaneous channel switching would be great for the Axe FX3, but these are all those things that, as I talked about earlier, will eventually trickle down. And all these features are things I fully expect to see implemented in the successor of the AX8, though we'll talk about that a little bit more in detail in a moment. And don't take this as me saying the Axe FX3 isn't worth it if it works for you. Absolutely, it's worth every penny. You're going to run up $3,500, $4,500 in a good new cabinet and two or three amp heads and a couple pedals. So you get a lot of bang for your buck. But if you're like me and you watch these videos to, you know, get better sounds out of your free plugins or um, get a couple different patches for your AX8, you're probably in a similar stance to where it doesn't make sense to have a $3,500 rack mount unit if you're just, you know, jamming in your bedroom. And let's say that I did 
just go out and buy an Axe FX3. It's not just the money. I, I can afford it. I can get rid of some of the stuff I don't really need all that much and definitely afford it easily. The thing is, it's it just doesn't work for me in its current form factor. I need a floorboard. It's that simple. And a floorboard works really well even in my recording applications. Run an SBDIF cable, I can change patches immediately by you know using the floorboard unit. Of course, Fractal also produces some shiny new foot controllers to accompany the Axe FX3 with some great features that I hope carry over to the new line of floorboard units, but that's another supplemental cost. I gotta spend even more to make this more powerful version of what I already have work the way of the thing that I already have, like that, it just doesn't add up for me. Um, whereas with the AX8, I can literally throw it in a pedal train case, grab a guitar, maybe a Baby Bomb 30, um, in case I wanna run it through a real cab, and a couple cables, and I can go anywhere, and it works perfectly. So it goes back to the question then, why would I spend another two and a half to three times more than what my current product is worth, for an overall worse user experience in a lot of cases and for more power that I'll only use like 5% of the time. It's just the, the money just doesn't add up to the value for me. I'm not a touring musician. I'm not a professional musician. If that were the case, then yeah, sure. But I'm not going to be using the color display all that much. I still edit everything on Axe Edit. Um, I'd like to have some of the blocks like be able to do some IR tone matches or be able to run simultaneous multi-amp blocks at the same time, but again, it's not really hampered my enjoyment in my current product. And much like anything else, I'm still happy with the sound quality and usability of the product I have, so why would I spend more to go to something that I don't think I'm gonna be entirely happy with? And I think most of you guys get that. I'm, I'm very privileged to have a pretty intelligent audience compared to a, a lot of people on YouTube, which is a, a rarity. Um, but I, I've seen some people I know go out and spend a lot of money on an Axe FX3 and a bunch of new outboard gear and I, I just know it's going to be sitting collecting dust based off of some of the other stuff they had and some other stuff they had was very capable and they couldn't make that sound good. So can't control people and their money though. Do whatever you want. It's just uh, kind of sad to see from a distance. So with that, I thought, you know, I've not done this yet, so why not? Um, go over some of the wish list items I have for the Fractal AX8 Mark II, whatever you want to call it, AX10, AX whatever. Now I'm aware that this exercise is probably entirely futile as most other content creators did this months ago. And let's face it, the hardware and software design for the AX8 successor is probably mostly taped out by now. I'd imagine it'll be out in like a year and a half to two years if the Axe FX2 to AX8 timeline is anything to go off of but worst case scenario this will be a fun little feature guessing game i guess so number one thing i want on the new ax8 i want the damn power switch moved i didn't think this was a big deal until i really started thinking about it um, because every time i play with it under the desk and i'm tracking something i gotta bend over and feel for it on the back and of course i know where it is now but it's a bigger pain in the ass than I thought it would have been when I first got it. I get why it's there, because if you're you know, on a dark stage, you don't have the option of stepping on it accidentally, which is nice. But at the same time, if you put it high enough, you aren't going to step on it anyway, because that's where all your amp controls and stuff are. They're not really worried about you stepping on that, so why not have the power switch on the front, even if it's like a hold down three seconds to power off. I'd be good with that. Um, yeah, it's a, it's a little bit annoying. I've, I've found that you got to reach on the back, especially now that it, the power switch is on the front of the Axe FX unit. So yeah, I don't see why that can't be done. So that'd be a big plus. Um, nice quality of life feature. Um, second thing, scribble strips. I think this is definitely possible considering that the new um, FC6, FC12s do have that as well as illuminated um, foot switches that show what's activated and what's not. Uh, the Line 6 Helix had it, which was a big winning feature hardware-wise over the AX8 that I think a lot of people do like, um, especially if you're not sitting in front of a computer screen. And even, you know, I, I don't care. I generally lay all my presets out the same where I know um, number one, scene number one is my rhythm sound, scene number uh, two is generally lead, C number five is generally clean, that kind of stuff. But it would be nice for the times that I'm not using everything or maybe I don't want to use scenes on a preset. Maybe I want a looper over here and um, I wouldn't need to see the layout to know 
what is what. This would allow your screen to display different information as you see fit while you play. And of course, I would imagine that screen is gonna come right off the Axe FX3, maybe not quite as high resolution. It's not super high res as is, but I barely use the one that's on there. So, you know, any improvements good, color's good, and the same control scheme with A through E works just fine for me. Um, I think there's some opportunities for improvement as far as how the, you know, amp controls and everything are laid out, but I think they work great. Um, so if they are copied directly from here to the next product, I really wouldn't care all that much. Um, really it's just the store enter shift to go different pages. That kind of stuff is, is more what, um, is irksome to me than the, the hardware layout. Um, so that would be a software thing, not necessarily hardware. The function switches are in a pretty good location. I think, although you might need to widen out the space if you add this next feature, we need a built in expression pedal. I'm, I'm pretty convinced at this point when I bought it, I didn't care. I knew I was going to buy one or two more external anyway. So it really wasn't even. Um, that big of a decision you already have four input um, for different expression pedals but i think a lot of people that are buying a floorboard will need at least one and even if they don't think they need one it can be useful for other stuff like volume swells and and, and that kind of stuff even if you know normally it's not part of their signal chain um, so that would add some expense but i think if you even made it to where the new ax8 with an expression pedal is the same price as an old AX8 brand new with one of the EV1 or EV2 pedals, then it's kind of a wash. And uh, that's something that, that I would think is totally acceptable. And if you want to be real creative, then it'd be kind of cool to have it as an optional module that you can add, you know, after market. But I'm, I'm not quite sure how you would achieve that and still have the function switches be in a decent location. Um, speaking of all the other switches combined, I think eight is plenty for scene and preset selection uh, combined with the functions works more than well enough for me. And then the other hardware, I basically want it to be a light Axe FX3 um, with the effects loop no longer really being a thing on, on the three and it really being replaced by different in and outs. You can practically do a uh, four cable method plus a direct out. So what that would mean is that you can do amps um, or effects in front of your real amp effects within the loop of your real amp and then come out of a raw output, go into a cab IR and send that to front of house. That way you can play through a real cab and not have to mic it up to get a direct signal. I would love that functionality in a future AX8. And I think the processing side is there uh, as far as the power goes, but um, just need to make the, the hardware compatible. There's room. Um, a really cool kicker feature that I don't think we would see because they've also got the FX series would be um, a couple amp relay switches. Not something I have to have since I already have a um, mini amp gizmo and that does basically everything I need it to, but not everyone does. And that would be just a nice little, you know, middle finger to, to other um, floorboard units. And a, a couple floorboard units do have them that even feature amp modeling. So I don't think it's that big of a stretch, but um, that would depend on how long you're making this thing. If it's much bigger than the AX8, then I think you can fit it. Otherwise, probably it's one of those things you could ax, ha, ax, if, uh, if you need the extra hardware space. And the only other thing I can think of is, and I don't even have a direct quote. I looked for it, and I can't find it, and I don't know in what context they were speaking, but if I remember correctly, a representative from Fractal was worried that even scaling down something with Axe FX2 power into a floorboard unit would be nigh impossible because of cooling concerns. And that's just laughable to me. Um, I, I get it. You're having to design software and hardware, and that's you know not something a lot of companies do anymore. But I've seen some teardowns of the Axe FX3. Correct me if I'm wrong, but this looks like, what, a 60 millimeter fan? Something like that on an aluminum fin stack? Is that even a fin stack or is it just like a solid block? Um, I don't even know if there's heat pipes in there. But you got that cooled with what it looks like came out of a, you know, 92, you know, IBM home PC. I, I think you can figure it out, all right? You got like the Nintendo Switch is running off of a 1.8. 7 gigahertz Tegra, I can't even remember, but you're running 60 frames per second titles on a tablet that big. It's got a copper heat pipe and a little blower fan. It doesn't overheat, you know. I, I, I don't think we're getting um, 
all that intensive with DSPs to where you need a liquid cooler to be able to fit it inside of a, a chassis. And I'm fine with making the thing thicker if you gotta do it, if you gotta have more fans, if it's gotta be as thick as a freaking Xbox 360, I don't care. Um, but I, it can be done. It's just maybe they don't want to um, sacrifice some of the, the overall form factor. That I understand, but believe me, seeing laptops that can run games that is like that thin on the front, that thick on the back, they get hot to the touch, but um, it can be done. So um, figure it out, please, and I will buy. I will throw money at the screen. <laughs> so that's uh, pretty much wraps it up. Why I don't have an Axe 3? Well, I'll probably never have a mainstream rack mount unit, um, and why I'm really looking forward to an AX8 successor a few months late. Probably should have done this when the Axe 3 came out, but oh well. Thanks for watching. Let me know what you think in the comments below, and we will see you next time. Bye. <laughs>